everybody. This is Amy Vanderlinden, pelvic physical therapist here at Moment of Truth. And today we're going to be talking about sit bone pain, otherwise known as your ischial tuberosities. Here's a bony example of the pelvis. Our sit bones are the two bones on the underside of the pelvis that we should mostly be sitting on. And so today we're going to talk about why we might be having some sit bone pain, some of the anatomy and some of the misconceptions around how to treat that and avoid it. So let's dive in. Often the hamstrings get blamed. So the hamstrings attach underneath and are the larger muscle groups in the backs of the legs. However, that does not take into consideration our large hip flexor muscles not just the quads, those are huge also, but also the psoas muscle um, and the iliacus. And those join and are often referred to together as just psoas, but the iliacus comes in off of this crest. The psoas comes in off the front of our vertebrae in our low back and they go down. It's a very thick, large muscle group that goes down through the pelvic floor and inserts on the inside of that femur leg bone. So all of that to say, more importantly, that sit bone pain often gets blamed or the hamstrings often get blamed for that sit bone pain. And it's more complicated than that. We need to uh, take into account all of these factors that can make there be a tug of war um, between the two sides of the pelvis. So to break it down, our pelvis, because it's two sides, it meets at the sacrum in the back and at the pubic bone in the front. So these two sides can both move and shift some. They can rotate like this. They can have what we call an upslip or downslip, and they can also shear, which is a forward or backward motion. And of course, it's often a little bit of a combination. Most of us are right-handed. We drive with our right foot. A lot of us have a little bit of a right forward rotation and sometimes an upslip. Our body's amazing at trying to keep us upright and keep everything even. But you can see how this tug of war would be created, right? Both sides. And so we wanna make sure that we're addressing this thoroughly. What often gets left out, you can probably tell where I'm going with this, the pelvic floor. So your perineal tissue that goes between the vaginal and rectal opening, or for men have a perineum too, it's just between their testicles and rectal opening, um, that perineum literally attaches to the sit bones. So do our obturator internus muscles, which are a smaller hip rotator muscle inside, um, deep inside. And then we have three layers of pelvic floor muscle. Not all of those attach directly to the sit bone, but they do attach to the sacrum and to this part of the pelvis, which is called the ilia. And the ischial tuberosity is the bottom of that other part of the pelvic bone. Again, two sides, two sets of muscle groups and lots of ligamentous structures as well. So to thoroughly resolve any sit bone pain, you're probably not gonna have the best lasting results if you're not addressing the pelvic floor. In the next video, we're gonna talk about some of the common things that flare that sit bone pain and that you might be doing that's contributing to that, that you can then avoid and be on your way to healing.